Cuckoo darlings, so I hope you like today's post. <laughs> um, and for those of you who are just in it for the travel stuff here, you may not like uh, some of the changes I'm making to this channel, but so many of you are really interested in what it's like to be here in France and to live here. And I also work here. I'm not just retired. <laughs> so um, that's what I'm really leaning into at this point. I, there's just so many of you that are moving to this country or thinking about it. And so I, I really feel like it could be a, of a service to share what it's like to be here. And I kind of live a different life in that I split my time between Paris but then also out in a very rural location out here in Brittany and I travel for work. So I thought you guys might like that. In order to kind of bring you some of that content, I'm really leading away from just doing a lot of editing. So some of it's gonna be a bit of a vlog style like this. And yeah, I just <laughs> take you along for the ride. So if that's of interest to you, then welcome, bienvenue. That's what we're doing. So. Uh, today, I, was, I just got back from being in Paris two weeks for work and French admin. I always schedule a day to deal with paperwork. I have, I had a post box full of mail that I have to follow up on. When they talk about French bureaucracy and paperwork, it is a thing. I kind of consider it like a part-time job, <laughs> no joke. Uh, two things that I got that you might be interested in was an update and renewal in regards to my lawyer insurance policy. So that's something that uh, you can add on to your regular insurance, like your house insurance, car insurance, that sort of thing. It's a writer. There is a legal department at the insurance agency that will help you with any sort of legal matters. Not like things that are hyper specific, but like troubles with landlord or, you know, like car accident claims, like just that kind of stuff. And I've already had to use it and it's like uh, 1474 euros a month. And you literally just sign it off to them and lawyers get involved and you don't have to do anything. So highly recommend that if you're thinking about moving or living here. <laughs> so, and I also got uh, a bill for my annual taxes. It's like, um, think of it like a county tax or regional tax uh, based off of your annual revenues. So you get that fun thing in the mail. Tomorrow, <laughs> I've got to start all of my March and April, March, plantings like seeds so you the ants oh yeah but we goes and but we goes do you know what a brico is <laughs> Um, it's short for bricolage, which is like a home improvement store like Home Depot or Lowe's. And so I'm gonna take you there with me today because I need to start some seeds and I need some supplies. And then I'll show you what I'm starting this month um, in my garden. A lot of people think that France is dog friendly and I might kind of disagree with that. Um, you know, there's the obvious places that you can take them, like, you know, restaurant terraces. Um, we got that question yesterday, but I think that honestly, like it depends in the States, you can take your dog to lots of different types of stores and here that's not the case. Like not every bricolage allows dogs, which I don't know how I feel about that because it's just a home improvement store. So the Brico that gets all of my money is the one that accepts the girls. So there you have it. So a little life hack. Lake Claire is a chain of supermarkets in France and they also often have um, in their mall a uh, dry cleaner or pressing and they also sometimes have a Brico 
a home improvement store. And within that, they also have a fidelity card. So you can use that for your dry cleaning needs, your home improvement needs, and those points add up really quick. isn't exactly the product that I usually buy, but I'll show you how I use this stuff. Dirt, pots for my plants and seeds, bird seed stuff, and a new tank for my riding lawnmower. It's starting to rain. <laughs> All right, let's go home I'm gonna, now that we've got this chore done and I'm gonna show you what I'm planting in the month of March. Okay, so I have a seed hoarding problem, first to admit it, but there's a benefit in doing that because every winter I'll go through what I've collected throughout the year and then separate out when I'm supposed to plant them into Ziplocs. So I don't even have to look through everything. I don't have to question it. I just pull out my Ziploc for the month and I get kind of like, it's like a, it's sort of like a little Christmas surprise in springtime. What did I hoard <laughs> and now get to plant? So Cosmos, I am obsessed with this brand. It's called Florea. I love their flowers. They're so unique and so different. And so like, I got this really pretty, I, have you planted Cosmos? I love Cosmos. I love the way that they like move in the wind and they just keep flowering for so long and there's like nothing to do. They don't, they're pretty drought tolerant and they're just super easy to plant. So this bright pink color, okay, here we go. Uh, this color of Cosmos, cause why not? Uh, I've got this kind of apricot -y color of snapdragons. Who else loves snapdragons? I love snapdragons, I'm so excited. Uh, this apricot color of foxgloves, more snaps. Oh, cherry rose. Look at that. Look at that color. So excited. Um, yeah, more snapdragons. How about Madame Butterfly Ivory? More. A lavender color. More doubles of those and one more cosmos because and one more cosmos because that's look at the inside of that one though i mean you can't fault me for hoarding all this so now i need to go and plant all of these well at least get the seed started right all right and then i promised to show you what i was doing with that hay sort of stuff so let's go outside I love the way that they like move in the wind and they just keep flowering for so long and there's like nothing to do. They don't, they're pretty drought tolerant and they're just super easy to plant. So this bright pink color, okay, here we go. Uh, this color of Cosmos, cause why not? Uh, I've got this kind of apricot -y color of snapdragons. Who else loves snapdragons? I love snapdragons, I'm so excited. Uh, this apricot color of foxgloves or snaps. Oh, cherry rose. Look at that. Look at that color. So excited. Um, yeah, more snapdragons. How about Madame Butterfly Ivory? A lavender color. This is the product that I usually use. And on the outside of the bag, it says linen. Um, it's, I, I don't know what exactly it is, but it doesn't blow away. Um, it's very soft to the touch. It's not sawdust, but you can see how it traps the moisture in here. So what I don't have to do is water my garden that much in the summertime. Uh, also, as you can see, I've been doing this for a while. So it just kind of continues to compost and I haven't really needed to fertilize. It keeps the weeds out and I just add uh, a little bit more each year. But the product I bought today wasn't exactly the same as this, so I guess we're gonna have to try it out. 
They're so cute. Hi, guys. <laughs> so this is the project. Um, the idea for this, because it's right next to the road, is to clean up this spot, because it was just all lawn, grass that had spread down into here. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it into a flower bed and then I'm gonna have a fence put in here and then like a gate that goes across to this area. So, so let's cut this open and see what we're working with here. Yeah, a little bit different. That's not bad, it'll do. The stuff that I usually buy was out of stock. So let's put this down. Well, that is it for today, everybody. I hope you like this new style of vlogging um, that I'm sharing with you and a little bit more of an insight into my little world in France. Here is your flower of the day. This is called a Lenten rose. I'm probably saying it wrong, but like uh, it's from the Hellbore family. So it's not really a rose, it's just the name of it. And I woke up to this sitting here. <laughs> I think one of my neighbors dropped it off maybe this morning <laughs> and but didn't tell me, which is really sweet. He's got some leaf rot damage so I'll have to kind of treat him for that but it's another London rose but it looks like maybe a white one so I guess we'll find out in the next day or two who gifted me this guy and then another update on I mean it's just like pure Easter in my garden right now this look at how huge these guys are I mean easily a foot and a half tall he's huge the, the flower on this is ginormous. They're so big. And these guys are all opening up. Aren't they so pretty with the dew on them? Look. Oh, see how it's sort of variegated right there? Oh, I'm so happy. There's my riding lawnmower and that building right there um, behind the greenhouse we're going to turn into a summer kitchen. That's all of firewood from the big storm that we had in early November. And uh, after we talked yesterday, I mowed the lawn and finished planting all those seeds. And uh, it just smells so good right now. It smells like fresh cut grass. As you know, uh, in France, you can't run um, equipment like that on Sundays. It's a interdict. So did all the streamer work. <laughs> it's fun. So they're wearing uh, these reflective vests because it's Sunday and it's still chasse season. Uh, chasse is the word for hunting and, uh, you know, kind of interchangeably used for the group of hunters. And there's two different groups out here. Goes a chasse truck right now. That thing in the back are his dogs. So I promised transparency, honesty, and uh, I think it's important to share my experiences <laughs> they're just mine um for those who are interested in moving to the french countryside and you own dogs um so this is a hard subject to talk about with the shots because i also really want to be respectful of the tradition and culture but there are three things that i worry about with the girls um, one is the shots two is other people's dogs here in france and not just in the countryside even in paris 
and also um, processionary caterpillars, which their season is a lot longer these days because of climate change. Uh, let me explain for each. Obviously not my video, but I don't have one um, handy. This is what they look like. They make nests up in pine or oak trees, and each nest has between three and 500 of these guys. They come down from the trees during the day to eat, and if they are disturbed, their little hairs, they will like shoot them out. They've got necrotic poison that will eat away at soft tissue. So if you accidentally touch one, kick one, um, your dog steps on one, they will shoot off those hairs. And the lightest version of it is it creates uh, skin irritations. Um, if you are so brave, Google what they have done to dogs. It is horrible. They will, they can kill your pet. So there are two different uh, Shoss units out here. Uh, one is my neighbor. He's the lead of that Shoss group. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty. And they hunt for deer and boar. But I've made friends with him and he lets me know um, in advance if they're going to be hunting in the woods behind me. Well, the first uh, Shoss group does not bother me at all. I don't worry about them. The second one does. They use these fields and they've got a pack of about 30 dogs trained to uh, hunt for a rabbit and a fox. And a pack that large, there's just no way for me to protect the girls. They do use a bugle so i can know in advance when they're going they're around and hunting in the area and i just try to cut my walk short change direction but i will say that actually the one that i'm most afraid of and have had the most bad experiences with is other people's dogs here in france especially off-leash, both in-city and out. Uh, let me explain why. There's always extenuating circumstances. I'm just speaking in generalities as a dog owner in the States versus here. And my past experience overall in the States was that if you had a dog that had issues, I mean, I had a GSP that was really not very friendly with other dogs that she didn't know. So as an owner of a dog, it, I, it was my responsibility to keep her away from others so she didn't create a situation. Um, I find this sort of in reverse here um, that there's just sort of uh, a mentality that you're gonna take your dog out uh, to exercise and walk your dog and regardless of their behavior. And the girls have been attacked in Paris. Uh, there was one time out here, I won't go into the details, but we were at a chateau for a big grenier and the owner's dogs were off a leash and they attacked Rose and the vet told me after that, that thank God she has the harness that she does. It's like neoprene and basically saved her from having a really horrible accident. On a happier note though, everybody around here knows the girls. They love them. The farmers pull their tractors and slow way down for them when they try and pass us. Uh, everybody around here has really accommodated us to make sure that we feel safe on the roads for our walks around here. So <laughs> when we are near the house, uh, we really do have a lot of fun. As you can tell, look how dirty she is. <laughs> You're very dirty. Do you need a bath? <laughs> so there's our chat for today. I hope you found this to be of interest. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, speaking of amazing neighbors, <laughs> One of them just gave this to me. She saw me coming down the street with the girls and ran out and handed this. She says, these are her favorite financiers. So have you tried this brand before? They look great. Little petit, petit four financier. Since 
1903. And it looks like they come from a area in the Manche department. So fun. Merci beaucoup. Oh, yeah. darling how are you today <laughs> all right you and i were going into dinan it's uh one of the bigger towns near me and we are going to <laughs> we're gonna go check out a new dentist so this is your psa for the day if you are ever considering living in two different places in france it's important that you have doctors and specialists on records in both locations because getting in urgently for anything is very difficult especially with the medical deserts out in the countryside of France so there it is be sure that you've got those resources lined up I even do it for the girls when I travel I always know where an emergency vet is 24 7 and ideally a neurologist because they're French bulldogs and you have to deal with that stuff so um, let's go to Dinan Also, darling, I want you to go to the link in my bio. If you're not on my email newsletter, go up there, sign up, it's free. I have been collecting all sorts of resources, links, events, all sorts of fun stuff like that since January for you. It will help with your Paris uh, travel planning for spring and even into summer. I have a hidden video on YouTube that I'm gonna be sharing with you and a bunch of other stuff. This is actually kind of a long newsletter, but I I only really send them out about once a quarter. So if you want to get yours, head on up, just click on the link in my bio and it opens up this whole page of fun stuff for you to check out. So, all right, Dean on. I have an unpopular opinion to share with you. But first, dentist appointment. All right, so now that we have that chore done, let me share with you an unpopular opinion about the Marche, the French markets. Here's the theory. They're for the rich, the retired, and the tourists. Let me share my theory why. I'm gonna make this a quick walk and talk because I have to get back to the girls who I left at home. Rich, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking not necessarily about money, but rich in time. Um, let me put this in a different perspective. Let's pretend I am a mother of two in uh, school age children and I work a full-time salary job so that you know. <laughs> in France, the average annual salary here is 36,000 euros gross. As said mother, I can't live here in city center. Why? <clears throat> it's too expensive. With my 36,000 euros that I make a year, these homes here in city center Dinan can be about 500,000. I usually what I'm seeing in real estate here for city center Dinan, about 300 to 600,000 to buy a home here. There's always exceptions. Now also, what do you not see here? Parking. Okay, so if I also was to live here as a mother, you know, taking care of children, I would have to pay for parking. I just don't have the money or time for that. Aren't these so sweet? I love them. Oh, 
I have to take my kids to school every day. I have to run errands. I, they are in, enrolled in after school activities. This is not a convenient way for me to live and raise a family, right? But when does that market run? Thursdays, okay, in the morning until about noon, usually a lot of farmer markets, marches. Um, I need to stop using the term farmer's market because I'm always farmers, but um, marches generally start shutting down between 12 and one. When is my lunch hour where I can run errands? Well, I leave at noon, but I don't work here in center of town. I'm not gonna drive in with a granny trolley, mind you, and go shopping for a week's worth of family, you know, food for my family <laughs> with a little tiny granny trolley. And oh, by the way, I can't pick up laundry detergent. I can't pick up toilet paper, all those other things that you need from a supermarket. Of course not. <laughs> so, that's what I mean, is like, if you're retired and have the time, you're rich in time and don't need to price shop, you don't need to use promotions, you don't need to use any of that kind of stuff. Or you're a tourist who has the time and money and interest to go shopping at a farmer's market in the middle of the week, then great, good on you. But that's not the everyday person in France. That's not the working class. That's just not realistic. It seems all shuttered, but you can see the picnic tables. This is kind of like an alley where they have a lot of bars. Sherlock Holmes pub, bar and vinyls. This is a bar that does lots of records. So hopefully that puts like a different spin or perspective. I mean, certainly there's weekend uh, marches, but I don't even go to them that much. I usually go to them when I am being a tourist and traveling in this country. It's just really hard to take the time and all the logistics and hauling granny trolleys around and everything else when you just, you got things to do. So just like everybody else back in at your home, use the supermarket. <laughs> takes a romanticism out of it a little bit, I suppose, but that's the whole point of this. You know, this vlogging style is to share with you the realities of what it means to live in this country. And not everybody is doing that really romantic thing of going to the, <laughs> the Marche every day. It would be nice though. Uh, Foss is a septic tank. Most uh, houses in rural France are on septic tanks and it ends up here. There's a sand pit on this end. And I just put these ornamental grasses in to cover up that. I've got some home improvement renovation supplies back here. I will tell you what's happening with this thing. Il avait, il avait pris les chaînes pour tirer le sac d'alarme. Il me ramène le tracteur, il n'y avait pas les chaînes. Mais comment Je l'ai rappelé, j'ai dit, mais t'as pas oublié quelque chose <rire> il me dit, Mais t'as peut-être besoin que ta, ta petite et l'autre au-dessus, tu sais, parce qu'il y a des grosses branches, tu sais. Et par contre, comme ma chaîne.
no... All right, darlings, today I am going to do this while I'm driving on the way to the garage. I am dropping off the car to have a checkup before we do our next trip together. Owning a car, that is a whole nother conversation to have in this country. Holy Moses, man. Not for the lighthearted. We got a good question. So this morning and I liked it. I, it was a great question. It was kind of in reference to just something that I briefly mentioned yesterday about what I should feed the boys lunch next time. Um, and the question was sort of like, well, what do you eat for lunch out there? <laughs> and, well, it, you know, it's okay. So think about it maybe a little bit like back at your own home. You got a mix of friends and family and you've got your more casual friends or family that are always just like you know barbecue super easy um very laid back paper plates <laughs> sort of thing right versus maybe you know over at your grandparents house or you know at a fancy friend's house they like to get out all the decor and the china and you know, plan out the meals, maybe even do menus, printed menus. This also is very regional here. It's an insane. You can drive your car for 30 minutes in this country and you feel like you're in a different world. There's like hyper regional cuisine and uh, recipes and dialects and accents and everything. And, and it's just, an amazing the diversity in this country is crazy well the same thing goes for food right and back at home you might be used to let's say in my case in the states you know Texas barbecue which is different than Louisiana barbecue which is different than Carolina barbecue <laughs> you know what I mean right and it, here when I was living, for example, beginning in Burgundy, that was very different because my friends were all winemakers or in the wine industry. So they were really into, even if the meals were simple, which they weren't, um, they were you know, often meant to be paired with wine. So for an example, during the summer, it would be barbecue, lots of whites, um, you know, lots of kind of fresh vegetable salads and uh, fresh fruit desserts, but all meant to go with the wines that we were having. Uh, versus here, <laughs> what would you have as a typical work week lunch with friends? Well, the guys always like, you know, I mean, they're, it's in between work jobs, right? They're working. Um, so they just want something that's easy and familiar, which is usually to start off with like an aperitif and um, sanglier pate, sanglier's boar, uh, maybe some dry saucisson. I'll often put out, you know, like some olives and other little snacky bits, but they just tend to want the pate and country bread. They don't want baguettes. They want like a uh, country bread, um, thickly sliced. And then the main dish is, main dish that they like to have is uh, chevroy, which is a type of deer here um, that they have caught um, during the chasse, uh, chevroy fondue. And they like to have potatoes with that. Usually it's, um, homemade fries but if they're at my house I don't have a deep fryer so um, I'll do like skillet potatoes for them and then uh, lots of dipping sauces um, their favorite usually is Bernays and then um, after that they'll finish off the bread usually after that for dessert so there's like no salads or soups or cheese 
you know, trays or anything like that, especially for just a midweek lunch. Um, and then a dessert would be something a bit simple like an apple crumble. Um, it tends to be fruit based. They're not really into like chocolate so much or something heavy like that. Although in reverse, in Burgundy, almost always, especially during the autumn and winter, dessert is always chocolate to go with a red wine. Um, unless it's like summertime, then it's like a fruit compote. Uh, clef clefouti is really popular there. Again, it depends. Um, I have a, another friend neighbor nearby who kind of likes to consider himself a home chef. And uh, one of his specialties is moule merinier. And which is fun because he does a great job. His sauce is absolutely fan fantastic and I love mussels. Uh, so I always love when he makes moule merinier. And <laughs> this is a little fun thing. So out here in Brittany, uh, traditionally, you won't see them do this at the restaurant, usually at, if this is at home, but uh, after everybody's eaten all the mussels, they get out shot glasses like you would for like vodka. And you take a shot glass of the leftover sauce in your bowl and then you cheers and do a shot of the um, bowl marinier sauce. So that's fun, huh? Um, but then like, okay, so what about Paris? Well, that, I mean, it just really depends. A lot of times my friends and I, we just go out to eat eat because it's Paris you've got like restaurants and terraces and that's just easier um, but to be quite honest with you it depends upon the size of the apartment because that's the bigger problem is what facilities do you have Paris apartments are really small and not every kitchen has an oven or a big cooktop or space to cook large meals in um, so sometimes what I've had friends who like are super chefs and really into cooking uh, they'll do the cooking and in advance and then we'll choose somebody's uh, flat that has the most space and then it's sort of a potluck style uh, where people are all pitch in and help so it's a kind of a convivial fun atmosphere although I've been to very very fancy <laughs> meals in some of the posh apartments in Paris and that's that's quite an affair <laughs> yeah wow I mean there's one that I wrote about in one of my magazines and I just still to this day it's one of my favorite memories um, <laughs> I love it so there you have it there's a long-winded version I'm close to the garage now so I hope you guys have a good day <laughs> hope you like that um, and of course in the next slide I'll post an opportunity for you to ask me additional questions. Thank you so much to all of you who've been sharing your feedback on this new uh, vlog style and I am so happy that you're enjoying it. I am too. Beezers. This is today's project. Now we talked about and I showed to you earlier this week that Manu and Denny and Gerard helped limb up these trees. But today's project is this guy because I'll show you, it doesn't look like much from the front of it. Eventually I wanna have a proper garage here, but this is an old building and we're gonna turn this, keep this part and turn it into a summer kitchen, I'll show you. But it's the backside, that's the problem this way all of this is a mess because of the storm that happened in early November I'm at the bottom of a valley and just over do you see that ridge line right there that on the other side is the ocean and the wind comes up through here well that big huge storm that we had in here and in here is uh, it took back down three side. trees I'll show you a, a do a little picture, the picture right now so you can see here. what happened it just uh, the guys kind of cut the trees that the fell and put the stumps back because it, they should reroot. And this is the result of those trees. So, do you, do you see that? That it's ripped 
like it peeled back the roof on this building like a sardine tin. So there's guys coming today to fix that and then it created a leak inside this building and so we're putting up all new drywall. And this is the result of those three tree stands falling it is just a ton of firewood. I have now about four winters of firewood seasoning here and they'll, it'll just need to stay here all spring, summer, early autumn to season and dry out. So slash piles are illegal um, to the public. Um, you have to have a farmer do it prof professionally and at certain times of the year. So Denny will come back and work on that for me. The idea once these guys are done at uh, some point, I don't know how soon because I'm just so busy this year and traveling so much that I'm just not around a lot to have contractors on property, but I want to do a terrace right here, if you can imagine, and come out around, open this up into French doors and have kind of an indoor outdoor summer kitchen area because this would be the view, right? And you may, you probably can't hear it, but there's a river that runs all the right through here. So you can hear that. And then I'm working on all new landscaping through this area right through here. Ooh, look at you, you're fancy. You guys are pretty, look how pretty you are. These guys are really fun too. They're sort of like a creamy peachy color. And this guy's starting to open up and we'll have to see what he looks like on the inside. <laughs> Look how tall these ones are. They're huge. Newbies showing up here, so we'll have to see what they're going to look like. And this one's new too. What an interesting color to start with. I told you Cosmos is easy. I mean, what? I just planted this a couple days ago, and look. I already have some guys, some volunteers. <laughs> All right, we're going to move the lawnmower. Well, it is seven o'clock and the sun is quickly fading, but they're getting there. I don't think it's going to finish today. So I'll send another update when I've got more to share with you. <sighs> I'm so glad though to have a roof back on again.